Okay, everybody, how you guys doing? Welcome, Sean Wilson here. I'm sitting with Mike Patrick, and I want you guys to know that we're excited today. And um, if you're watching this on YouTube, I wanna welcome you too. If you're watching a replay for this, and if you're watching this as a member, uh, you're, you're in for a treat. Now, I wanna explain something. I was just browsing YouTube, which I randomly do all the time, and I'm listening and I see this beautiful white montage and the guy that's playing on it, I was mesmerized for the entire video. I didn't know whether to be memorized more the guy's knowledge <laughs> of the instrument, his actual chords, <laughs> which he was playing some dope chords, <laughs> or the sound that he chose to use. I was like, this dude is insane. And it inspired me so much that if you've seen my strings video, the reason I did that video, I, I literally moved all my schedule of videos around. As soon as I did that video, I said, I'm doing a string video now. I want to be Mike Patrick. So I did my own video and, and I reached out to him on Instagram and I, uh, you know, asked him if he could do the uh, a session for us. And he, he was just like, no problem. Like he didn't, it's, it's like he, he barely thought about it. He just said, no problem. So I just want to thank him for coming. Mike, man, thank you so much for coming. Thanks thank for you for having early. me. Absolute it's, pleasure. It's in the UK now. So it's it's like I said, it's almost midnight, if not past midnight his time. So he's definitely um, just being really gracious to share with us musicians. And man, I, I just, I love it, man. So thanks again. So welcome. Um, so the, the first thing I want to do is I want to start off by just, can you just give us like a five minute background of maybe just kind of how you started, just kind of really quick how you started and some of, some of your highlights and, you know, kind of what, what, what you've done. I got to the point where I went home and I just dedicated all my time to the motif. I figured oh out goodness. everything it could do. When they said, where's the synth line? I played the synth line at the top of the keyboard and split. And then I'd have oh the motif straight at the bottom. I, so I wait a minute, let me, let, me, let me get this straight. So you're yeah. telling me that where most people are using two keyboards at minimum, you're using only one? And you're still finding all the sounds that they need just from the Yamaha board. Exactly that. I had the thing is, Sean, I didn't have the money. So I had to make it work. I had to make it work. So I did everything on the, on the, the motif rack. Wow. Um, to the point where on the motif rack, I could mute and unmute channels. So what I would do is I'd have my keyboard here and then I'd have the rack in front of me. And as we're going through certain points of the song, I'll mute channel one um, and I'll mute channel two. And I'll just, I'll just, I, it's, it's like I spent so much time with that motif. I spent so much time with that rack that it just, I knew it. It became I a part of you. And then one day I went to a church. I was playing at a church, me and my friend. And I'm, where I used to live is a very safe area. You can leave things in the car. I left my motif rack in the Ugh. car. He was playing at church. Service was great. Uh -huh. Went back to the car. Motif rack was gone. Oh. And so... I had all my custom sounds, everything was gone. Oh. You know, but you know what happened? I spoke to the church and they said, look, we actually covered your rack in our insurance. So we'll claim and, and we'll get them to send um, the rack back. These times I had the motive rack for so long, the ES was, had been out for a while. Okay. And the excess had just come out, the excess rack had just come out. So okay. um, the box comes, they say, oh, your rack's here, I go to church, I open up the box. Instead of it being the normal motif, it's the motif excess. Oh. So I'm like, so I, before the excess even came out in the UK or America, I think I got one from Australia. So I got like to basically check out the excess rack before it, you know, really started to come out. Now before this, before then you were using the classic or the ES? The classic. Oh. So I, so I skipped the ES. And okay. so it, that was a major, major blessing. But then again, um, I had to learn how to understand the excess. All over again? <laughs> all over again. So you have to create I mean, your whole thing again. All I the remember, sounds, everything. Because the thing is, the classic had sounds like hard ensemble, certain sounds that were classic. Yeah. When they made the excess, a lot of stuff went out the window. Remember, I know you guys used to use an EP called Vintage 74 on the classic. Mm, um, yeah. And it was like a nice Rhodes electric piano sound. Yeah. But when they made the excess, it sounded a bit different. It didn't, could, yeah, they didn't keep the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. when that came out, I had to get to know it all over again. But then that pushed me even further. I was doing things like, and I will share this if I can. 
um, what I used to do when I used to go to other churches. Instead of using their Roland or whatever's there, I'd bring my rack and I'd MIDI it into the keyboard. Mm. And then I, there's tricks that you can do, even to the point where if I'm playing piano and strings, I can mute the strings by pushing the modulation wheel up. This is on oh. the this is on the motif on the motif keyboard. So while I'm playing, instead of if a keyboard doesn't have faders but it has a modulation wheel, I can always use that to control certain sounds. So you sounds can use and, them. Oh, that's that's. Yeah. How come I never thought about that? That's what so I'm you can saying. Right, because nobody's using. We're not using mod wheel with strings. Most of us. That's what I'm saying. And when you're going oh. and there's certain keyboards there that they don't have a motif and your choir's called to sing. You just quickly plug in and I've got my, and all I need to do is push the modulation wheel up or in reverse. So if I'm playing and it needs to be just strings, I push the modulation wheel up and the piano disappears. Can you have it to where, say the mod wheel up is strings, the mod wheel down is piano, but middle is half? Possibly, yeah. It's been okay. a while, but it, 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 it's something that yeah. could be done, definitely. That's but it just... Yeah, that, we got to that, the point. That is, these are, I think we're about to have a, okay, so before we get into this, because you're getting me excited, because yeah, yeah, yeah. let me let me just say something. I, every time I get a keyboard, I learn, I feel like I learn five to 10% of it. Mm. But then I don't feel like I can get the real, you know, what's really in the keyboard. Yeah, I So understand. people ask me all the time, how do you do this? How do you do that on a keyboard? But it's just kind of like I find go-to sounds and I just use the same three or four or five sounds. Yeah, but yeah. you're kind of saying you're, you've had to sculpt just because of your experience. And guys, yeah. this is the reason uh, he's here. I, I keep calling him a Yamaha rep, but... <laughs> <laughs> Let me clear that out. So, okay, okay. <laughs> I am not actually a, a Yamaha rep. I'm an artist. Okay. You know what happened? Along my journey, I've always played Yamaha. My dad, the first keyboard he ever gave me was a Yamaha keyboard. And as I grew up, I, I literally went through all the Yamaha keyboards. My first key, keyboard was like a Yamaha PSR. Oh. And then I got a, a Yamaha SO3. And then I got a Yamaha mm. S30 and S90. And okay, then I so got you know the one, S90 and all those. Yes. I know some that most people don't know as well. Um, the EX5. Mm. Um, no, I hadn't which, heard that one. Yeah, and it was actually the keyboard that was meant to be the motif. There's sounds on that keyboard that are in the motif. There's a sound called sing single line. Um, single line? Isn't that like a lead? Yeah, so there's a keyboard called the Yamaha EX5, and that sound is in the EX5. And I heard that before the motif came out, they were actually going to release this EX5. And I'm not going to lie, it's an old keyboard, but there's sounds in there that would shock you. Okay, I, I see some people putting some things in there. Y'all do me some the do me a beast, favor. Yeah. Do me a favor, guys. Whatever kind of keyboard you have, let's go ahead and drop that in the comments. Let's just take some time right now to see what people are using. Um, okay, so I I, um, I have the, the Modi X, which I got last year. Mm -hmm. And then I've got a, uh, back here is a Mo XF. XF, yeah, that's a great keyboard as well. And then at the church, I have the X, X, the big one, the F. The oh, um, not the Mo, but this one, the you know what I'm talking about. The I know the one XF. The oh, flash. I get so confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I have an XS, no XS7. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like a teal color. That's that's the the module version I had. Yes, yeah. and I have that one, and I keep it at the church I play for on Sunday. So each yeah. each. So each facility has a different Yamaha. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, and by the yeah. way, Siobhan, for those of you who saying they had a Phantom, I had a Phantom and I got rid of it. I sold, I traded it for the Yamaha. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I traded name. my Phantom. I had a Phantom uh, X. No, not the G. I had the G. I had a Phantom oh, G. Oh, the G. And the G's are good. I have to call someone out. There's a friend of mine. I think he, I'm not sure if he's here tonight, but he, he does follow the channel. His name's David George. Okay. We grew up together and he brought the, the Phantom and he loves the Phantom and I respect the Phantom, but I beca we became arch enemies because I had arch the motif. Enemies, yeah. yeah, but I mean, yeah, they're all great keyboards. It's, it sure depends on the situation, you know, what you need. I was just going to say the situation you're in, you know, everyone has their preference. Well, I was just going to say, like, if you're really good at your board, I'm pretty sure that somebody could take the Phantom and do just what you're doing as far as yeah. if they have to learn it inside and out. You know what I'm saying? And people... 
always go for which keyboard is, but I really think it depends. I, my preference is Yamaha, but I do think for those of you who have Phantoms, I think it really just depends on just kind of learning the inside yeah. and outside of, of, of your instrument. That's why I'm really glad that he's here. Um, I, Siobhan wanted to know some of your favorite um, patches. Okay. So um, my favorites, are, I mean, I'm going to make honorable mentions R&B soft. I oh. think I mentioned it. Yeah, R&B soft. The other one. Yeah. When I was young and I was in church, someone used that sound and I was probably only 14. And I said, what, forgive me, what the f is that sound? What is it? I need <laughs> yeah. to know. The montage, the motif and the, mo the mod DX, all of them, there's one sound called In The Night. That's what it's oh. called, I-N-D-A, In The Night. In and The so, Night, I've heard of that one. Okay. There's a sound in the motif that, I don't know if people touch this sound, but when I first heard it, I thought it was nothing. The sound is called Broken Sign. I'm going to select. So instead of in the night or? Instead of, because in the night and uh, only lets you play one note at a time. Okay. You could make it polyphonic. You could make it polyphonic. But what's the yeah. name of the one that you just mentioned? It's called Broken Sign. Sign spelled S-I-N-E. Can you I'm, can you spell in the, it's in the night, I-N-D-A? Yeah, -N -N I-N-D-A, yeah. Okay, I see somebody put it in there. Okay, that's all that we needed so everybody can get that sound. Yes. Guys, wait, but hold on. I, I want to show them. There's this yes. effect that I hear in songs all the time that I just, I every time they, uh, <laughs> my church wants me to do it and I tell them I can't do it. And yes. it's, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up YouTube, take me to the king. So you guys can hear it. Okay, cool. Want. All right, so everybody listen to this. Listen to this real quick, right on 151. Okay. My heart's torn in. Yeah. Da, da. Like, but so, it sounds like it's like, like I'm, it's I'm raising. Seeing, I'm seeing in the comments, sine waves. That's what I'm saying. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to share what I know. It might not sound exactly the same, but this is what it is. And it's okay. a secret. And then I'm going to show you this. So it's, it is a sine wave, but there's two types of sine waves. There's a, there's a monophonic sine wave or legato and there's a polyphonic sine wave. So oh, what I'm going to do, teaching. I'm going to okay. show you the monophonic sine wave first, and then I'm going to make the polyphonic sound wave with you guys and show you how to do it. Cool. And when I say every.